So, if you're wondering about the screen, it's because... So if you're wondering oh, about the phone was still on. Which reminds me, I should probably put on Do Not Disturb. Don't need to be disturbed for this. I, I'm not an expert in OBS. I don't know how to just have a black screen. And as you can see by the stream title addressing the drama there's a there's a lot going on originally I was going to talk about this when the whole thing was going down with everyone else but I didn't want to get involved and so what better time than April Fools Yay. <laughs> so, I am still going to play the game, but I figured just for a fun little April Fool's drama, it would just be this ominous looking ready live thing. So, let's start the game proper. <laughs> And I am going to have a shorter stream today because it is April Fool's and I want to experience a lot of the stuff. Like currently being booped on Tumblr. October 8th, 1.24 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby number 6. Okay. So, where exactly does this leave us, Apollo? Well, the Drew Misham who was killed wasn't Drew Misham the Forger. Basically. Uh, well, then, uh, who was he? Well, he was actually... Again, why do they keep using that item? <laughs> but I'm even getting booked in chat here. No! <laughs> Doing her nails. So, you really made those forgeries. I forget what I did for her. I think it was just... Quiet. Yes, for father. I know it was wrong. Could you tell us how it happened? Mm. My father was a painter. I loved painting ever since I was a child. One day, father saw it in me. He saw that I had the talent. The talent? For making forgeries! How should I say it? It was not only paintings I made. Given the materials, I could make anything. Anything? Father was so proud, and I was so happy. But in the end, I was making those forgeries I never had a good constitution nor personality I know very little of the world outside my door now because of me father is do you know about this red envelope I remember that envelope it was some time ago so, you were already a... Uh, you were already creating your works back then? I started when I was only 12 years old. Let's check the court record here. So, seven years. Wait, but it says that thing was seven years old. So her first forgery got that envelope. Hmm. Also, for all the time travelers coming back from the future, yeah, it's just, the title was different. And the thumbnail was different. Thumbnail was a bit more ominous. So, the one who figured out that stamp was poison, that was... Mr. Justice, it's time. P to the courtroom, please. Right! 
Yeah? No, mm, I guess, yeah, come along. Uh, out of time. Wait, Vera, uh, just one more thing, please. Those three paintings in the studio. I painted those as a part of my work. Right. See, we checked them out and we saw what was underneath. We saw the rough sketches under the three finished paintings. I see. Mr. Justice. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Father, he knew of you. Of both of you. Your late father? He was watching, gathering information. All about the Bright and Co. Law Offices. But, but, but lately, we're, we're not doing just law. Yes, you do tricks, gags, to amuse, and play piano. Well, well they're not really gags. Yet, when Father heard you had resumed the legal business, How pleased he was. Who was Mr. Masham? How am I supposed to know? What, what if Papa's... Papa? What if he was Papa's Papa? What? Huh? Judging from the relative ages involved, I'd say it's highly unlikely. Things are already confusing enough with all these... Papa's running around. We know that the victim's daughter, Vera, was the forger. What does this mean for the case? Guess we're about to find out. October 8th, 1.36 p.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Court is back in session. Mm. Vera seems pretty tense. She's practically chewing on her fingernails clean off. I do that sometimes. Don't tell nobody. Perhaps you could begin telling us how it all worked. How did you set up this Dream Sham Forger persona? There's that stare again. She's drilling more holes into his head. I know it's hard for you, but hey, <laughs> he's a handsome guy. <laughs> What's hard? <laughs> Very well, miss, if you would. Did you really make those detestable forgeries? <laughs> Perhaps you'd rather answer my question. Were you the one who painted that painting? The remarkably similar one? Uh, yes. I painted it, yes. Father praised me quite highly for it. So, she was the one who made the forgeries. Yet she did not wish to reveal the truth of her op of their operation. So, the victim was a stand-in, a decoy. To the world at large, he was the forger, not her. Mm. I've done a bad thing. Ha I have, haven't I? Regardless, we need a little more information. About, for instance, this. Ugh. You've seen this before, you know? But, yes, uh, it was in the desk drawer. Case closed! You're guilty! Uh, uh, I got ahead of myself. Uh, very well, you may proceed with your testimony. Tell us everything you know about this envelope. The red envelope. I created things, and Father sold them. This envelope came...
came after my first work. That was other than a painting. Father handled the deal. All of it. I received the stamp that was in that envelope. It was after that job that we moved into the current studio. Hmm. There certainly was much of... There certainly was much of great interest in your testimony. Not that the witness realized it. Very well. Begin with the cross-examination. Right. Okay. I'm fine. I need more information about this forger. This Drew machine. Bleh. Press everything! It. So, these things... Ugh, you were making, uh... Ugh. You mean paintings identical to other paintings, right? Yeah. No, he was talking to me. Wow, even she's more adept than you, Trizzy. Hey! The closer they were, the happier father was. I was happy too. Still, you're quite young now. When did you begin this work? My first painting was sold when I was 12. Your Honor! She had no idea she was doing... <laughs> what she was doing was illegal! Objection! Easy there, little attorney. She's on a murder charge, not grand larceny. You're not here to defend her for the crime of forgery. But this is forgery. Hmm, I didn't realize crimes got that specific. Hmm, true. Please, tell us more about this envelope. This envelope that may very well have killed your father. All right. Wow, it's quite a difference going from, like, the boisterous judge to a very common collected varus. This envelope came after my first word. Hold it! Hold it! By... Other than a painting, you mean. You'd only done paintings up to that point. Yes. But Father had a realization. He noticed my talent extended to making things other than paintings. For instance? For instance, a letter someone had written. Or a fingerprint left upon a cup. Holy. She is... A copycat. Or a signature on a document. A seal upon a letter. None of this makes her sound very innocent at all. <laughs> uh, her forehead. She was being used by her father. She had the talent to make all this stuff. She could use it for good. But her father molded her and groomed the plants into a more sinister shape. Um... $10,000 promised in this litter was the start. The beginning of a new industry for Drew Michelle. A new industry? The creation of items to be used in criminal proceedings. I totally am not coming after her forehead because he is working with a right. Forging evidence, in other words. Uh oh. There's so many other things you can forge that are fake, not just the evidence, you asshole. Father hand. Hold it! Oh, hold it! So, you didn't know how the things you were making were being used? <laughs> I enjoy painting very much. I think I understand. The Fallen has lived in unusual. In an unusual little world. Can you tell us what happened to the papers that were in this envelope? Father signed them and sent them back, I believe. Um, did he follow the instructions? Send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp. This is a rather important matter. Give your answer some thought. Mold it like a painting. 
Uh, Judge, that's not how paintings work. What? But, but you mold it by giving it different prompts and stuff to minimize the things you don't want. Oh my gosh, Judge, are you using AI art? What? No, I'm using prompt generators. Yeah. Have you been watching Shadowversity? <gasps> my idol. How do you how do you know if it? What, what did you watch? We're not getting into that can of worms. Ugh, fine. Hold it! What do you mean you received it? Did I do something wrong? You didn't use that stamp because it was dangerous. Correct. Deadly poison on the back. Poison. I have been told how this word is properly pronounced. I have forgotten, and so I'm going back to calling it poison. Objection! You're supposed to say it with just confidence. It doesn't matter what it actually says, whole head. What? You can't force an answer upon the witness. Now then, perhaps you would tell me, Fraulein Vara, why did you receive this stamp? Uh, is something wrong? It was beautiful. Uh, uh, you mean it was one of those commemorative stamps? Yes, I think it was. So, you didn't know about the poison? I guess not. So, the trap failed by chance. By mistake. Thanks to this commemorative stamp. Hmm. Quite the close call. Now we have a signature piece of evidence that's going to, you know, indict a certain interviewer with having a shit ton of stamps. Alright, I've pressed everything. You mean, you've moved to where the current Drew Studio is? Yes, we saw very few people there. I began drawing picture books. This single jump had tied them to the criminal underworld. <laughs> really? <laughs> Children's picture books have tied them to be a criminal organization of the highest authority. That goes with faking cocoons. Well, hmm. hmm, I think I've opened all the cases up. I think Mr. Masham wished to reduce their visibility in the world at large. When we had to meet someone for some reason, Father posed as the creator of the work. So, that was the real essence of the artist, Drew Mashan. You did the work, and he supplied the face. That sounds like stealing credit! I will put this on the same charge as stolen valor! <laughs> Two years in an IHOP. So, you really didn't know anything, did you? You had no idea how much danger you were in! Apparently not. Uh, about this commemorative stamp. Could you tell us more about it? Mm, I could draw it for you. It was very pretty. And more than that. Oh, wait, I get it. <laughs> she's a copycat and she's got a lion on her chest. She's lying to us. <laughs> she's lying to us. Yeah. It was a picture of people I liked at the time. Huh? This is something new. Oh, let me guess. This is a commemorative stamp of... Grammaire and the Trope. But those stamps aren't sold anymore because the man died. So this is when Isotony is flowing like a great song. You can enjoy it as it goes. But even listening ahead, you understand and see it all. 
laid out perfectly. Apparently, we've got some cross-examination yet ahead of us. If you would be so kind as to continue your testimony for me. Hmm. The stamp was a picture of my favorite magicians, so I kept it. Called it! The red envelope came after she completed her first job. Grammaire is yellow. Trucy is blue, and I'm guessing her mother is as well. And oh, if you'd look at that, Trucy's outfit is blue with a red accent. What envelope showed up? A red one. So I assume that Papa was the other one. The, the other motif of red, blue, yellow. Ha! -ha. Which means clubs would be green. But I don't think there's any green except on this man. The red envelope came after she completed her first job. It makes it a letter from her client. Whoever wanted a forgery made. Apo! We're close. We just have to piece together the parts. A deadly weapon in a red envelope. And the path it took to Drew Misham's life. No, Apollo! I was gonna say I know the magicians! Yeah, because there's only one set of magicians in America. Hold it! Hold it! M magicians? I love mysterious things. I always have. Even though she fainted when she saw Mr. A Hat. That's... That's not the same thing. That's not mysterious. That's scary. You're confusing mysterious with freaky. Father took me when I was very young. What? Uh, is that not your father? No. It was a great magic show. Oh, okay. I thought it's like, oh, we have a kidnapping on our hands. Nope. It was a great magic show. I loved it so much. See, see? Isn't magic great? Fine. We, yeah, sure. No need to get all excited. We're in our courtroom. But the magic troupe we saw disbanded soon after. I was quite sad. Did she see what I think she said? Magic troop. Now where have I heard that before? The red envelope came after she completed her first job. Oh, that's the loop. Deadly weapon. Save here, because I think I have to throw Grammaire. Oh wait, no, I guess I don't have. Yeah, I don't have access to people. But it's either this or this. I feel like it's this because it says. Objection! Yep, music change. Those magicians you liked. Was it this bunch? Mm, I wouldn't call them a bunch. Apollo! They're not a bunch! <laughs> hmm, I don't think they're a bunch either. Still, I have to wonder. Why include a commemorative stamp like that in a little business letter? Good question! Well... Green stamps are always better, and you can't beat Troop Grenier. But the whole murder plan was a failure because of it. Ironic, don't you think, Prosecutor Gavin? Mm. 
Oh, shit. That Prosecutor Gavin? Grimea? What's with Gavin? What? I ask just one question of this witness. How the fuck did you get a ticket? Those things are like three grand! Oh, God. Huh? In your testimony just now, you stated this was your first work that was other than a painting. Mm. Please, tell me, what exactly did you make? Can I ask what? No! Answer the question! Now! Uh! Uh, pro Prosecutor Gavin! You're unusually not the one whose volume concerns me, Rockstar. Yes, it is unbecoming of me, I apologize. But I must know. Please, Miss Misham, tell me. <laughs> it was a book. A single page in a book. A book. Please be more specific. <laughs> it was a handwritten book. Like, like a diary. <sighs> no! I, I don't know! Was that the first time Prosecutor Gavin lost his accent like Darian? What's wrong with Prosecutor Gavin? He looks like he just saw a ghost. Eh, yeah, Christopher got the death sentence, don't you know? What?! <laughs> Miss Misham, this book... Was there a picture of a silk hat on the back cover, yes or no? Uh, how... how did you know? OBJECTION! OBJECTION! Prosecutor Gavin! The defendant is asking, answering all of your questions! Stop badgering her! Ugh. He's told you nothing, has he? Your soiled, sullied, mental... NOTHING! Sullied? Isn't that a big blue monster? Who? Phoenix Wright, the big blue monster. Who else? What? Papa? The big blue monster? He never told you about the trial, seven years ago. About how he came to lose his attorney's badge. Yeah. It was a certain piece of evidence that decided his fate, you know. A certain diary. On the back. It bore the mark of a silk hat. Ah! What? Phoenix Wright tossed out of the profession by false evidence? And the forger who made that evidence... Is this girl standing right in front of me? Vera, you must tell us! The evidence you made was used in a trial seven years ago. Who asked Drew Misham? You, to forge that evidence. For all our sakes, who was it? Mm. We only met once. You, you met the client? Well, who was it? It, it was... Was... What's going on with Vera? She's staring at Prosecutor Gavin's face again. Oh, no! Oh. Huh? Yes, what? Is this something about me? Uh, I remember clearly. I remember who gave me the book. The diary. Who was it? <laughs> v Vera. The, the V. 
David. The devil. Defendant Vera Masham. Condition, unconscious. Examiner's diagnosis. Acute atrican poisoning. This ends the trial. Re this ends the recording of the trial of the murder of Drew Masham. Vera Masham was, during the trial, poisoned by an unknown assailant. The dosage was just under the lethal amount, sparing the defendant's life. She is currently in intensive care, and, it, and is not to be disturbed for any reason. A very simple case, at first glance. I think I know who's talking now. Until it finally began to show its true colors. The long road to the truth takes us to the record of another trial. Oh, I can't pull up evidence. No, damn it. Uh, I was going to check if the Gavins are seven years apart. I feel like they are. In some ways, that was the starting point of it all. Oh, yeah, he looks... Oh, my gosh! Whoa! Whoa! Now, is that Claver or Christopher? And that is where we must go. Oh, my gosh! He's so tiny! To find the whole truth. Oh, fuck that. That was only a 30 minute... That <laughs> That'd be the best April Fool's joke. So, and, and, and no, I, I thought this was gonna be short. Uh, not this short. I meant like a two hour, cause that's how long they usually go. Continue to the next chapter. Yeah. Showdown time. I lost. It's only a game of poker. A game I've played for a long time and only lost twice. Who was the first? The man I killed, of course. Well, it seems I've found the partner I've been looking for all along. Over a game of cards. Why, yes. Over a game of cards. That was how we first met. Seven years ago. Almost twelve years ago. Seven years earlier, Phoenix Wright's final trial. Look at how bright this room is! April 19th. 9.27 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew! Okay! It's been a long time since I've felt like such a rookie. Got to try and relax. Ah! Good morning, Mr. Enigmar. I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. Oh gosh, is this really the voice I'm gonna stick with, Nugmar? Yeah. I need something more proper. But that's just grammar, and I don't want all of them to sound the same. So, if I just take grammar and move it over with a bit more grandiose, but a bit more cunning. Yeah. Enigmar! Yeah, this'll work. I, I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received the files from your previous attorney only yesterday. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure I'm prepared. I understand. I'm asking the impossible of you. Yes, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. Many. Magnifique, Grimea. Oh, shady. Enigmar. 
Okay, I... Th his stage name is Zach Grimmier. Oh! Trucy's last name is not Grimmier. It is... Trucy Enigmar. Huh. Interesting. And dang, he's 40. I've been to greet many. Met me, Grimmier. He's 67. Legendary magician. All we did was play cards. And that was enough. Actually, it wasn't. Trust me. Man, it's almost like Phoenix and Apollo are very similar voices. <laughs> his mustache is also his mutton chops is also his hair. Yeah, there's a lot of hair going on in that dude's face. Oh my gosh, look at her! Oh, morning, Papa! Haha! <laughs> I'm so glad you came! You okay, Papa? They, they picking on you? <laughs> I'm fine as always! <clears throat> Wait a minute, who else says that? This old boy is here to help me after all. That's young man to you. <laughs> I nearly stole your line. <laughs> you nearly stole my lines, little scamp. Good morning. That's a cute outfit you have on. Thanks. My first show's today, after all. Oh, I'm sure it is. What the heck is she talking about? Ugh. I feel like this is the other grammaire, which I'm going to reduce the kind of gravel on him that he just has this more presentish voice. You totally won't become an orphan. <laughs> yeah, there's this guy who's going to help. Oh, old boy. Huh? Me? Look what he started. Um, uh, here. Oh, I guess that was the bailiff? I don't know. What's this? It seems fate's clock, will, fate's clock will make me wait a little longer. At least, only less than ten swift minutes remain. To all those who have supported me in my life's work, I give thanks. Farewell. Magnifi Grammaire. Oh, wait, she's been talking. I could have swore it said her name. I'm blind. I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with spiky hair. They said it was really important. What's this? A memo for you or some such? Um, not from the looks of it. What is this? Looks like a page from someone's diary. Oh no. Ooh. Oh. This ain't a good sight. Phoenix really is an old boy. Yeah. Huh. He's got his nightcap on for a nap. <laughs> yeah, a long nap. I'll give it a read later. Notebook page added to the court record. Well, how do you feel about the trial today? Well, we'll get through it somehow. Incidentally, the prosecutor today is a new guy, I hear. Ah, an easy win then, yeah? They're calling him a true throughbred in the history of prosecutor's office. Like, I haven't heard that a thousand times before. Of course. Of course, there's one of those every year. The switching of attorneys just before the trial. I know that it is a difficult situation I put you in, but allow me to say one thing, Mr. Wright. Yeah? They will not be able to pronounce me guilty today. So, do your best. 
But do not worry. First time a defendant's ever given me such a pep speech. Usually most of the time they think they're guilty. Hmm. I shouldn't be suspicious of this at all. I'll do what I can. <laughs> I'll see you do not under I see you do not understand. You see, it will be impossible for them to declare a verdict. I impossible? Yes. Isn't that right, Trucy? Yep, you bet, Papa. My first look at the case was only yesterday. The information I was given was a tad bit lacking, to be honest. I've only got these two pieces of evidence. Victim's name, Magni Fi Cramer, 67, male, estimated time of death, April 13th. That's 12 days after April Fool's Day. Almost 12 years. Between 11 and 11.30 p.m. Cause of death, loss of blood from the bullet wound. Really? It was loss of blood and not, you know, brain failure. Nope. Magnifi's tumor found in... Mag... Malignant tumor found in victim's liver. Hmm. No, wait. I got the paper. Damn it, I can't spin it around. Still, I'll do what I can for their sake. I believe the curtains will be lifting any time now. <laughs> I am in your capable hands, Mr. Wright! My client is Shady Enigmar. Known to the world as Zach Grammaire. A wildly popular magician. Star of the troupe, Grammaire. His mentor, Magnifi Grammaire, was a rare breed of magician. He single-handedly ushered in a golden age of stage magic until he was shot dead. And Zach Grammaire is the suspect. April 19th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number seven. Oh my gosh, it's so much more pristine. Court is now in session for the trial of Shady and Ed... Enigmar. Uh, I believe it's called Enigmar, sir. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Is the prosecution ready? I was just thinking. What is all this fuss about? I'm gonna, like, merge the two voices until it's revealed which of the clavers this is. Or which of the governs. Bit of a buzzkill, really. But buzzkill Is this some sort of new kind of crime? One of the worst in this trial, yeah? Where are the sweaty palms pounding hearts? A Gavineer's concert got ten times the thrill of this gig's got. But who, who were you again? Claver, Claver Gavin. I came to get the party started legally. Yeah. He's not the star of the troop. He's the spade. No, damn it! I can't see their collar. <laughs> Shady had had the club, whereas he has the spade. Gavin! Defense attorney Christoph Gavins! Oh, figured my bro is more famous in this part of town. Claver Gavin. Lead singer for the mega hit band, The Gavineers. You're out of your league, rock boy. You know. What? I know what you're thinking. You're out of your league, rock boy. Hmm. True. My debut single, 13 Years Hard Time for Love, went platinum overnight. But that's just a hobby to me compared to this, yeah. Talkative, aren't you? I like your... affected Euro rock accent, by the way. I'm just getting warmed up here, attorney right. 
Perhaps you would be so kind as to fill this in on this case. Also, I nearly said hair forehead. Octo baby. Time to call the opening act. What was his name again? Oh, yes. Detective Gumshoe. Hit it. Yeah! Gumshoe! He looks exactly the same. And you are? Hey. You were the one who called me up here, sir. Name's Dick Gumshoe. I'm a homicide detective down at the precinct. Detective Gumshoe. Long time no see. Hey, you! Eh, uh, huh? Me? Today's the day, pal. Today, I win and you lose. I got confidence in my testimony today, see? What? You normally lack confidence in your testimony? Uh, detective, this is my stage. Can the antics. The, huh? All this high ewing and such. And I could care less about your history together. <laughs> Poor Gumshoe. Very well, Detective Gumshoe, if you would. We're all friends here except this newcomer. Now, it's getting warm in here. The heat is really kicking up. Got to stay cool. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Please tell us about the case at hand. It happened six days back in a room at the General Hospital. Uh, the Marectus Clinic, if I'm to be specific. The facts are simple as they come. Here's the crime scene. The victim was a patient asleep in a hospital bed. The killer comes in, puts a pistol to his forehead, and bam! Lights out. Dems the facts. <laughs> hey. Hmm. Not so long ago, the victim, Magnifi Gramier, was a famous man. He had the entire country under his magical spell, as it were. Gosh, that is quite the magician get up. Yeah. Oh, yes, the great magician. He retired years ago, though. Say the name Magnifi to one of my generation, and you'd be lucky to get a blank stare. Yes. Though I'm sure the youngsters today know his disciples even better. I dare say, Troop Grammaire has made quite a name for themselves. Anyhow, the, the retired Magnifi's been in the hospital for the last year. Hmm, what was... Uh, what was it? Uh, a mall ignorant tutor or something. Doing something to his uh, liver, I think. Yeah. Uh, a malignant tumor, perhaps. In other words, he had liver cancer. He had only three months to live, in fact. Okay. Hmm. The facts do seem simple enough. But something's not right. The victim was already climbing a three-month stairway to heaven. Why not wait for him to knock, knock, knock on heaven's door while shooting? I think you're gonna get his copyright struck with all those musical references. I would have put it. <laughs> I wouldn't have put it quite so lyrically, but it's true. Why make the effort to commit murder when the victim was about to die? Incidentally, the victim had a serious case of diabetes. Diabetes? In fact, he was about to shoot up with insulin. When he was shot with a pistol, the syringe was found at the crime scene. Chronic diabetes and cancer. As much as it pains me to say it, the victim was clearly at the end of his life. Small syringe to shoot up. Hmm. Hmm. I believe the question before us is clear then. Why did the killer have to shoot this dying man? 
What reason could he have had? His all victims seven all criminals seven years ago were exclusively male. Very well, detective. Perhaps you can enlighten us on the circumstances of the shooting. That yes, sir. Hey. I'm Apollo's father, can't you see? The spikes. <laughs> Actually, the victim uh, kind of ordered the defendant to do it in him, to do him in. A few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering his own murder. The defendant did what was asked of him and shot the old man in the forehead. The bullet was fired from the pistol found at the scene, no doubt about it. And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir. What? You, you're saying the victim ordered his own shooting? Those are the facts. I have it here in the letter in question. But I have a feeling that shoot him means to shoot up the insulin. Uh, magnifique grammaire. Look, hey, hey, I was going to read that. Excuse me. To my beloved student, Zack, to you I entrust the task of lowering my life's curtain. Come on the 13th, 11.05 p.m. I will ready a gun with which you will shoot one shot square in the forehead. You cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. Huh. I wonder if there's another forehead he shot. Hmm. Oh well. We're seven years ago. We don't have much evidence to us. Ooh. <laughs> Thanks, Gumshoe. Thank you for holding the evidence. No, oh, no problem. I'm just gonna spin this around for ya. Ah, I think I got something cool. I always hated getting shots. I guess Magnafi was giving himself the insulin shots. There's no way I could do that. <laughs> Yeah, needles are bad. Wait! How did he use this to inject his insulin? Why are there no traces of it having been used? Hmm. Something to keep in mind. Yeah, it's, it's empty. Very unusual indeed. Although, could such a thing as a letter really cause one to pull a trigger, I wonder? I believe the answer to that question can be found at the end of the letter. Ah. You cannot refuse, and we both know why. Looks like you stabbed yourself with the zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh... <laughs> yep, age 17. Which means, seven years later, he'd be 20. And he is 24! So, yeah. Seven years ago... Christopher Gavin... got the forgery. And so... Claver Gavin, seven years later, looks exactly like Christopher. How old's Gumshoe here? 32. Which means, plus seven years, he's only 39. How old is Phoenix? Wait a minute. She's so tiny, she's age eight. <laughs> but now, now I see why <laughs> Claver was so, like, shocked at the, just like, wait, what the fuck? You forged evidence seven years ago. Oh shit, I used that in my trial. No! <laughs> Detective Gamsu, can you explain this to the court? Unfortunately, even the defendant won't say a peep about that bit, sir. One thing bothers me about this. Why didn't he just say 11? Why have him come at 11.05 without some specific reason? The devil is in the details, Herr Attorney. We're going to be saying that a lot because Christopher's in the details of my face. Well, 
Was there some reason? As it turns out, there was. Every night for a half hour, starting at 11, the victim, Magnifi Gramir, was given an IV. An IV? Uh, there it is in the picture on the side of the bed. At 11, a doctor would come to set up the IV. 30 minutes later, he would have come back for the empty bag. This happened every night without fail. So, that was the only time they could meet without the chance of an untimely interruption. During his IV. IV straight to his lungs. I don't think that's where you're supposed to put IV. Very well. Shall we begin? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you would. Hmm. What's this reason he couldn't refuse, I wonder? He could have at least mentioned it to me. Hey, look, Gumshoe's in the game. This is great. Hold it! Hold it! Whoa! Just because he got the letter doesn't mean he went through it with it. Oh, I disagree. The victim was indeed shot in the forehead after all, just as he had commanded. It could have been a setup. But let's not be in such a hurry. Maybe we should let the witness talk for a change. Thanks, pal. Mm. Fine. I can play it as slow as I can play it slow as well as I can play it fast. On with the testimony, Detective Gumshoe. There are a few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter <laughs> ordering. <laughs> I was talking, pal! And this letter was sent by the victim. There it is! Gotcha! You're all mine this time, pal! Huh. I had the handwriting checked out, of course. It's the victim's. No mistake. Ah, uh, I see. But someone's watching this from seven years' time to say bullshit. <laughs> Score one for the boys! What are you implying, Gumshoe? Uh, you know, the boys in blue. Ow. I didn't lose. I was just ascertaining the, f ascertaining the facts. So why am I so annoyed? Because you're being written by a different person. But a letter ordering his, your own death. Things aren't what they used to be, I guess. I'm not sure this is exactly commonplace, even now, Your Honor. <laughs> so anyway, guess I'll keep going while I'm ahead. <laughs> Point one for Gumshoe. Look at that big mouth. Hold it! And he still has that bandage on his later. Actually, no, this is like kind of close to the normal games, because look how standard <laughs> Phoenix looks. So that means, please, I want to see Gumshoe in current time. How can you be so sure? Hey, you gotta learn to stop relying on people to do your thinking for you, pal. Learn to think for yourself. Get that nugget cranking. You fail to grasp the concept of questioning, detective. First, we got this letter. It says, shoot in the forehead. Loud and clear. I can see that. But I still wouldn't do it. Well, maybe you need to grow yourself a backbone, pal. I'm a boy in blue. I gotta do what I'm told. Even turning off my body cam. Where's your body cam? In my eye. I am a golem. Honestly, Dan even remember Gumshoe being in this game. Well, yeah, because this takes place seven years ago. It's technically not in this game. This is just history. You failed to grasp the concept of shooting people is bad, detective. We also found the defendant's pistol at the scene. Traces of gunpowder residue show that have been fired recently. Well, Mr. Wright. As far as I can tell from the looking at this photo, there seems to be no issue with the prosecution's claim. Photo. Maybe there's something in there I can use. So they're saying the defendant shot the victim in the forehead. I think there's a hole in the prosecution's argument. Clearly, Mr. Ignar shot something else. 
Looking at this photo, another possibility occurs to me. That, why are you sounding so protagonisty? I call it my pipes of power. Why not cords of steel? Yeah, it's trademarked. Seven years later, give it them. Give it some time. Weren't there copyright like layover after four years? Nah, Mickey Mouse exists in this world as well. Copyright law is a bitch. Uh, okay. What does the letter tell us? That the defendant had a reason he couldn't refuse, which his teacher wishes. Bingo, pal! That's why the defendant popped him one in the forehead. Mm -mm -mm. Oh? The defense disagrees. You see, the defendant had another choice he could make. Objection! What? And you can prove that with this photo. I can prove he had a choice. Yeah. The defendant might have fired like he was ordered, but he didn't shoot the victim's forehead. Well, let's hear what you're talking about, what you're thinking, Mr. Wright. And I show the health bar early because I'm a nice judge. So you can, you know, break a hole in the space-time continuum and keep on falling into this moment. If he didn't shoot the victim's forehead, what did he, what did he, what did he shoot? Take that! <laughs> oh, it looks like a gun as well. The clown doll? Yes, all clowns should be shot. Take a closer look, see? It's been shot in the forehead, too! Ah! There's a hole in, in its forehead! No, Mr. Clown! Judge, do you like the clown? Yes! When has an opinion of yours ever been right on the offset? Oh no, a clown's bad? Very bad. That goes for everyone in the jury and who was ever watching this seven years later. Clowns are evil! Yes, and a hole in the prosecution's claim! Objection! Oh. And I suppose you have a reason as to why he'd shoot the clown doll? Mm-hmm. He didn't just shoot the doll. He shot the doll's forehead. His forehead? Oh! Oh, is that why Claver is so obsessed with saying hair forehead? Because it's like... his one victory. <laughs> Let's read the orders once more, shall we? You will shoot one shot square in the forehead which is exactly what he did he shot the clown doll square in the hair forehead the what the, the forehead okay what'd you say hair in front of it you're not german the defense has raised an intriguing possibility that hole in the clown's forehead it definitely looks like it was shot bailiff send someone to investigate this matter objection objection I admit I'm impressed, but I expected nothing less. Still, this doesn't mean he didn't shoot the victim. Objection! Objection! Oh, wait a minute, I recognize that objection! That's Sam Regal! I recognize that voice! Scanlan. Perhaps he didn't have to shoot a forehead as ordered. But the letter says nothing about whose forehead. Uh, I... I I don't like the idea that the official voice of Phoenix is Sam. No offense to Sam. It's just that I've never heard Sam like do a very serious voice. But the letter says nothing about who's for him. This was the only way he had to follow his orders without taking a life. Hmm. The bullet hole in the clown doll's forehead does demand an explanation. It might very well be a clue. Yet Prosecutor Gavin is right. It alone does not prove the defendant's innocent. Innocence. You cannot say for sure the defendant didn't shoot the victim. So sorry, Mr. Wright. How sad it was to see the Marty fall. How sad is it to see a novice's overconfidence? I know that you'll lose this trial and lose your badge altogether. What? Nothing. Why do you think my voice hasn't changed? I'm immortal. He doesn't realize just how big this little hole is going to get. It's gonna fall apart. I mean, look at the, the structural stability of it. It's, it's falling apart.
Detective Gamshu. Please, take this newfound fact into account as you continue your testimony. So what if he had shot the clown? He still had shot the victim now. And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir. I don't know if I pressed that one. Hold it! Hold it! <laughs> yep, that... That's Sam Regal! <laughs> so, let me get this straight. You're saying my client first shot the clown, then shot the victim? Hey! Not a bad summary, pal! More of a confirmation than a summary, but whatever. That was really more of a confirmation than a summary. But our defense attorney seems pleased enough with himself. <laughs> these people ever miss a chance to mock me? Well, now that Mr. Wright's gotten that out of his system... Down shall we continue with the testimony. Did you just try and make a system of a down reference with two sentences? Maybe. I didn't have time to gather all the details before coming in here. This testimony might be my only source of information. Better pay attention. Read this letter carefully. Actually, the victim kind of ordered the defendant to do it. And if you would, yada yada yada, blah 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 blah. Hold it! You mean this pistol, the one in the crime scene photo? That, that's the one. It's a funny-looking gun, so there's no mistake in it. We compared the bullet taken from the victim's skull with a bullet fired from the gun. The rifling marks on the bullets were a perfect match. So, you verified the murder weapon, in other words. You bet we did! Hey, the pistol definitely belonged to me. Now I can't just... I can't stop hearing Sam. Why are you so certain? What pile of sand has your head been stuck in all this time, pal? You never heard of Zack and Valance quick draw shoot em? Huh? What's that? But one of the defendant's specialties. Zack and Valance stand on either side of a goyle. Then they shoot! But the bullets don't hit him. Instead, they hit everything else on stage. This was one of those, one of the pistols they used in their show. Got a great design, eh? The kids love it. Many boys and girls join the police because of that pistol I right hear. What? You know, that would explain a lot of, about the police force. Jesus, they see violence and they're like, I want to do that. Troop, oh my gosh, this is going to be a difficult word to say with this. Troop Grammaire stopped doing that act a while ago. The old man held on to that pistol ever since. Should there be two? The court would like to see the pistol in question. You got it, sir. Here she is. But, well, this truly is a blast from the past. It's a stage pistol for magic shows, see? But it can fire real bullets. Hmm. Interesting. It looks so much bigger in real life than on TV. Yeah, but it can only hold one round. By the way, the pistol's firing chamber is empty. And it shows traces of having been fired recently. So, were any fingerprints found on the gun? Unfortunately, no. The magicians. Of course, the defendant is known for wearing gloves. Oh, yeah, because totally, if you're not known for wearing gloves, that means you're completely innocent. The fact that there's no fingerprints of yours anywhere. We might say that a lack of fingerprints is, in fact, a fingerprint of its own. That's conjecture. 
Aha! Intriguing point! Well made! Whoa, 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 whoa! Not well made, not intriguing! In any case, you have to just be a buzzkill. The court accepts this evidence. Hey, uh, Gumshoe, can you, uh, show me that gun? Oh, uh, for sure? Yeah, uh, let me, uh, yeah, this is the side of it. And then that's the barrel. This is the top of it. This is the bottom of it. There's no, oh, tiny bit of evidence. If you look closely, you can see how the pistol's made to bend here. It's... A one-shot only model and I guess this bend is where you load it so this is the famous Grameer golden gun hmm my grandchild will get a kick out of this gun yeah probably a lot of kick <laughs> I say kids used to love pretending they had one of these I wonder if they pretended to miss their targets too Is that it? Is it? Just see how it bends. No being able to see. Gumshoe, why are you pointing at me? Hey, I'm a cop. I know how to point a gun and kill people. Yeah. Do you not want to die? Well, Mr. Wright. And how about you? No, you. No. Duck season. Rabbit season. Duck season. Bogus reference. What? I don't know how to finish this. Then stop. Okay. Their gun is down. My grandchild would get a kick out of seeing this. But now it's time to return to our testimony. So what if he had shot the clown? He still shot the victim, pal. And now I use this- OBJECTION! OBJECTION! The trickiest cases often seem the simplest. I'm going to use that when I am a hobo, seven years later. What are you talking about? Nothing. Prosecutor Gavin, you missed the bullet hole in the clown's forehead. If you hadn't missed that, you might have come to a very different conclusion. Understand? Yeah, but like I just said, pal, after he shot the clown in the forehead, he went and... Objection! Objection! Did nothing of the sort to the victim. The pistol proves he couldn't. The, the murder weapon? How? It's quite simple, Your Honor. This pistol only holds one bullet at a time. <laughs> if he had shot the clown in the forehead, he could have shot the victim, too. All right. Past the hour mark. It's time to get a drink. Arizona Fruit Punch. All natural. Very good. Dang! Ah. <laughs> Wait, that paper, that paper, whoa! That, that's not a contradiction, not even close. All he had to do was reload the pistol after the first shot. Objection! Objection! Oh? Where did he get the extra bullet? They're not so easy to come by, you know. If you claim the defendant had one ready, then prove us how he got it. Oh, oh fuck, you're using the legal system against me of the burden of the accused. Shit. <laughs> oh, I can't laugh. Well. Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> well, now I'm playing Phoenix, right? So this is... I'm drinking Phoenix, Arizona. Contradiction punch. I had a feeling this wasn't over yet. No, this party's just getting started. And I haven't proven anything yet beyond the good looks and startling record sales. An utter lack of humility. Hmm. What's this? It seems that the prosecution has another witness prepared. Like I said here, Detective, was just the warm-up act. Uh, uh, come on, why am I never the main thing? Because do you want to be accused of being a, a killer? Yeah, killer good looks! 
Only I get to say that because I'm foreign. <laughs> what kind of racism is that, Phoenix? I don't know. I'm not studied in racism. Neither am I. Are Germans studied in racism? That's kind of a racism. Oh, sorry. Now that the audience has gotten a taste of what's to come, they're ready. Ready for what? For my decisive witness, of course. A witness who, you will find, can prove one thing for us. That it was Zach Grammere who shot the victim in the forehead. Very well. We will pause for a 15 minute recess. This might be my lucky break. I'll need that 15 minutes to talk to my client, Zach. Court is adjourned. Oh, come on, how many to be continued are there? Mm. Let's keep going against my better judgment. Each of these to be continues have been 30 minutes apart, give or take. Yay. April 19th, 11.21 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Very impressive, Mr. Wright. I have to say, I expected nothing less. We've only just begun. I was hoping you could tell me a bit more about what happened, actually. I did not think you would believe me if I told you. Fair that you discovered the truth for yourself. Do you think I have a <laughs> very different voice to my face? Yeah, it kind of fits the performer aspect, and plus, it fits the name of Zach. Yeah. I was thinking of you, you know. I think we need less thinking and more talking. That night in the hospital, what really happened? Ah. The way your eyes gleam, Mr. Wright. You'll scare Trucy. Speaking of which, where is she? You have seen the problem yourself. The letter. The one... Shot in the forehead, one, right? Yes, and the reason he speaks of it. I could not deny my mentor's wishes. Even if it meant his own death. Uh, why not? This is something I will not say. For now, at least. What's this for now business? I have done many things in my life. Some, well, some poorly. This is a cross we must bear alone to our graves. We? Wanted to know about the night of the incident. Finally, this guy sure likes to take his time getting to the important stuff. Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. I'm gonna slowly shift around Zack's voice because, oh my gosh, this just sounds like Phoenix. I can't tell who's talking by my own talking. So, if every Grammar talks like this, well, this one's a bit more old and stuff. Then a more boisterous version of it. No, that just doesn't kick it, does it? Hmm. It's very difficult to keep a consistent voice for such a boisterous style. Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. I snuck into his room that night at the appro appointed time. And found there upon his bedside two pistols. Two? Yes. The one I had used on stage. And the one that had been used by my partner, Valant. Oh, for the second Valant's quick draw thing? My mentor. He had the look of one sleeping. I stood by his bedside, hearing only the light sound of his breathing. Then I took the pistol into my hand. I cannot deny my resolve. Faltered then, for a moment. You faltered? You mean you thought about shooting him? Recall, there was a reason I could not refuse his request. His last such request, though not his first. So, 
there were other requests you couldn't refuse before. To be honest, I've not always been steadfast, and I fear I've brought pain upon Trucy. Was Magnifi concerning it? Cool. Co <sighs> Coercing. Coercing? Coercing his disciples somehow. I've never seen that word spelled out. Just what was going on in Troop Grammaire? Yet, in the end, I did not shoot him. Instead, I turned and shot the clown! I took the pistol I had fired and placed it in my pocket. It's right here. In your pocket? I believe if you examine the bullet in the clown's head, you'll find it to be different than the one in the mentor. Then... What were those called? Rifling marks? Yes, well, that is all I have to tell you concerning the case. Concerning the ca Give me the gun! You mean there's something else you can tell me? <laughs> you are a fascinating man, Mr. Wright. Thanks. Yes, there is something. My mentor, his eyes opened. What? Magnifi Grimmere? The old devil. He was not asleep, you see. No, of course. The gunshot would have woken him anyway. And there we had our last discussion as mentor and pupil. It was not a long discussion. Maybe five, ten minutes or so. What did you talk about? <laughs> Mr. Wright! Did I not just tell you? It does not concern this case. Zach Grammier. He seems pretty steadfast to me. Or maybe he's just stubborn. Mr. Wright, your presence is requested in the courtroom. Or is just every bailiff just a test for different voices? Yes. Once again, I am in your hands. Right. Let's get back in there. Yeah? Your last name's not right. Not yet. <laughs> You're not even in this scene. But I can be. Anyone can be here. Even Spark Brushel. Please don't. Court is now back in session. During our recess, a bullet was found and dug out from the clown's head. Well, this is news. And the rifling marks. There wasn't time to do a detailed analysis. Though, they did find a weapon type match the murder weapon. Hmm, well, it's not very conclusive, is it? Which is why I'm about to call my very decisive witness. Your decisive witness? How many times have I heard those words? Though, they often turn out to be far less decisive than you think. Oh, don't worry on my account. I'm quite confident this witness will do the job. After all, he is intimately acquainted with the players of our little production. It's... it's... it's gonna be Valant. Oh, of course. All they can tell is that it was a similar gun, of course. Whatever doesn't benefit you! Don't you know how this court system works, baby? It's never on the pro it's never on the defendant's side. We want as many people in jail because this is America. Bring the other half of Troop Grammaire's famous duo, Zack and Valant. Valant Grammaire. So, we get to meet the great Magnifi's other disciple. So, I am. Um... Yeah, you didn't let me talk. Perhaps we'll start by asking your name and occupation. Oh, we don't have them yet. Valent Grammaire, magician! Um, and you're the decisive witness, are you? Can you prove your fellow student, I read that as yellow, your partner's guilt? Fate, the grand illusion, filled with the traps and tricks. What? Well, wait! The shooting took place in that hospital after 11 o'clock at night. 
If you're a witness, does that mean you were there l that late? If one were to deduce this logically, the conclusion is yes! Um, okay. I always get the characters, don't I? <laughs> I have an interesting fact for you. You see, several days before the crime, my witness received this. That looks very familiar. But wait. That's the same letter Zack Gramir received. Yes! Or perhaps I should say, ta-da! Oh my gosh, that hair. Order, order, order! And what does it say? Surely not the same thing. Perhaps you should see for yourself. Why, it's practically the same! The court accepts this into evidence. Oh, no. This is most unusual. Exactly what was going on with you folks? What exactly was your troop grammar up to? By which you mean... I'm just having trouble envisioning a man who would ask his students to kill him twice! Both of them, no less! It's just my opinion here, Judge. But from these letters, I'd say he was coercing them, not asking them. We walked the magician's path together, and in so doing, shared much of our lives. See? I thought it was going to be extremely identical to the judge's voice when I knew Valent would show up as a witness. But, obviously, this is the younger Valent. That isn't the gravitas and gravel to him. I'm younger, more spry. I don't have a mustache. When people are so close, there is strain. A warping of relations, you might say. Yet, this has nothing to do with the case at hand. By which you mean you're not going to tell us. Which makes me wonder even more about this reason they couldn't refuse. We're a cult, your honor! Wow, just saying it out loud. We're magicians. We want magic. Well, let's get on with this testimony for starters. The defendant, Zach Gramer, stands accused. Tell us why. Oh, I'll do more than that. For where he walks, the red roses rise, singing hymns to the miracle that is magic. Fascinating. Though I hardly need to remind you that the evidence could just as clearly point to you as the suspect. The letter, the murder weapon, and now two bullets found at the scene. In fact, the only difference seems to be the designated time. <laughs> As every magician knows, timing is everything. Yes, and now it's time to get this party fired up. There's just something about Claver's head right here that it's just like, you could like crop this off and it's like, here is your new lesbian from Ace Attorney. <laughs> The night of the crime. That night, I visited the hospital room at the, at the time Magnifique requested. The smell of gunpowder hung in the room, and my mentor had taken his final bow. I did not imagine my fellow student have received the same ins might have received the same instructions. Yet a deal with the deed is still a deal. Death's sweet kiss I gave to the clown. Then I inform the doctor and the police. Hmm. So, you were the one who reported the crime? Indeed, I would think. This fact alone would clear my name of suspicion. Let's not jump to any crazy conclusions. Yes, the cross-examination generally comes before the conclusion in this court. But if your testimony proves to be true, then the defendant, Zach Gramir, is guilty. Oops, I accidentally hit the gavel. It's official. Whoopsie doodles. And if it wasn't Zach Gramir, then the killer was you, Valent. Ha <laughs> ha! 
no disappearing act will get you out of this. Oh, why do you think I designed the magical Mr. Hat? I'm going to be abducted. Why do you think I put on a mustache? No one realized I am the same man. Two pistol shots, and no one noticed till you told them. Have you been in a hospital? They're really quiet when the doors are closed. Because the walls are so thick that that's why pagers are used. Because it's just solid concrete. Thick concrete at that. Because there's supposed to be a lot of foot traffic with a lot of heavy, vital equipment. So, and there's a lot of people having probably violent outbursts in some hospital rooms because the treatment's not right. And so you don't want that spreading to the rest of your, you know, patients. So, yeah, hospitals get very quiet when all the doors are closed. It's creepy. <laughs> that night, I visited the hospital. Same time. <laughs> Excuse me. You already said this. Which, according to the letter, was 1120. Indeed. In magic, timing is everything. I'm not the villain. Right. That's you. No! Oh my god. Are you related to Jersey? No. No. Consider the illusion of teleportation. If I were to appear on stage before my stunt double has left, how would that look? Wow, you just said that out loud. Whoops. Oh no. Why? It would reveal the very secrets of my magic. Now that you've revealed the very secrets of your magic for all of us, let's move on. You went at the designated time, and what did you see? Smell of gunpowder. powder. So, you weren't worried for your own safety at all. I mean, you smelled gunpowder, yeah? What if the shooter was still nearby? <clears throat> I did not consider this, to be honest. It is forbidden for a magician to have a good imagination. But really, isn't magic all about illusions and imagination? How about this? You were the shooter, which is why you weren't afraid. No, you are the one imagining. It is forbidden for a lawyer to have a good, good imagination. Um, chat, this is really sounding like a cult. Thumbs up if it's a cult. <laughs> Go on my cult. <laughs> Opinionate if this is a cult. The witness will refrain from pausing so suspiciously before responding. <laughs> I understand these cues. I have the special eye. And then I shall bestow it upon the steel-corded individual. Isn't that me? No, you have the powerful pipes. The steel-corded individual is someone later. <laughs> I'm generally anti-imagination. Yeah, that's exactly how Gramier operates. Anti-imagination. We're quite Disney about it. My forbidden imagination is starting to imagine things. <laughs> I did not imagine my fellow students. No, that's why I say it. Which brings us back to this reason neither of you could refuse. So it does. And my partner, he did not refuse. But Magnifi wrote the same thing to you. Why could you refuse if Zack couldn't? Because I have the will of steel, of course. You cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. Okay. You cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. I really wish there was a way to, like, pull up two pieces of evidence at the same time and be like, I can look at both of them. I can overlay them. That's a gimmick for another game, isn't it? <laughs> I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Overlay evidence. Because... Yeah, no one on this stream would know, but I am designing my own kind of Ace Attorney thing. With cases and murders and stuff like that. I also do this trick where I bend steel bars, so perhaps steel isn't all so strong. So which is it? Mind if I continue? Neato. 
Yet a deal with the deed is still a deal. Hold it! There were two bullet holes at the scene. One in the victim and one in a clown. Aren't those the same thing? Wow, you hated your mentor. Yes, that's why I shot him. Oh, uh, I mean, I didn't. You're saying the one who shot the clown was you? No doubt my partner, Zag, had said much the same thing. Yeah, because whoever didn't shoot the clown committed murder. Better dig around here a bit more and see what I turn up. Mr. Valent. Let me ask you about something else concerning the crime scene. Namely... How many pistols were there when you entered the room? By which you mean what, precisely? Two pistols were used in the Zack and Valent Quick Draw Shurum, correct? One for each of you. You are well informed, yet... Only one of my old friends sat in the hospital room that night. What did Zack tell me back in the lobby? Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. Yes, this is the valent talking, but I'm gonna do it a bit more gruff. I snuck into his room that night, at the appointed time, and found there upon his bedside table two pistols. I took the pistol and fired and placed it in my pocket. Man, his voice is really inconsistent. Hmm, I see no problem with this statement. Only one pistol is visible in the photography of the crime scene after all. So, you picked up that pistol and fired it. Indeed I did. Alakazam. Alakazing. Alakaboom. Hmm. Is the number of pistols really something important? Yeah, the number of pistols is quite important, Your Honor. B very well. Please add this detail to your testimony. What can I do but obey? Alakashuta man! Only one pistol. So, you took the only pistol there and fired it. That's correct. And that pistol was... And that pistol is, was this one, which was left at the crime scene. Good show! I see you two are a magician of sorts. And you're an idiot of sorts. Do you have any idea what you just said? I'll see the fire in your eyes as you glare at the witness. So how about heating up this trial a bit? These slow ballads bore me. Hmm, I've got a hunch, but maybe that's all it is. Maybe I should ask about something else? I don't have the bullet. I don't have the bullet! In order to shoot a pistol, you need a bullet. Where was the bullet? I entered the room and took the pistol in my hand. The bullet was already loaded, ready to fire at any time. A magician is always prepared, you see. Prepared for... One never knows when a miracle will be called for. A magician always has seven doves in his pocket and a white rabbit up each sleeve. Clearly we're dealing with professionals here. Professional idiots. <laughs> hmm, I've got a hunch. I should see my chiropractor. <laughs> hmm, I should be the one to say that chat line. Bullet was loaded to the pistol. Really, so important. It's very important, Your Honor. Very well. Please add this detail to the testimony. Damn it! What can I do but obey. I feel like I have to set it that there's only one gun, and then show the evidence that there was two shots? Uh, 
Oh, wait, I've been skipping a ton of new dialogue. Hold it! If the pistol was already loaded, something doesn't make sense. Where were the victim's fingerprints on it? You should know that... You should know that we of the troop Grammaire are capable of many things. One of these things being able... Being the levitation of iron balls without touching them. There's no magic involved here. The shooter was just methodical, is all. They simply wiped everything of fingerprints. I can't really do much with the fingerprints that aren't there. Maybe I should ask about something else. What exactly was the pistol when you entered the room? Atop a small bedside table, it was. As if to say, here I am, take me into your hand, pull my trigger, shoot him, I'm totally not hearing voices. The victim clearly wanted to be shot. But why? Perhaps he wanted to go out with a bang. Yet we will never hear from the, the truth from his lips, so all we can do is guess. Hmm. Is the location of the pistol all that important? Without a murder weapon, there wouldn't be a, no murder. It's very important, Your Honor. Very well. Please add this detail to your testimony. What can I do but obey? Oh. All right. Let's save here. I've gone through every possible configuration. Now, it is time to change up the testimony. Music hasn't changed. Your Honor, wh what do you think about the witness's statement? Um, I'm not sure I follow you. Well, follow me into the abyss. No, don't make a time loop. No. Rude. The witness's statement is clearly faulty, Your Honor. Okay. Hold it. This is just such a long process. Why did you do that? I would think calling the police would come first. Then you know nothing of the relationship between a master and his disciple. In the original Japanese version, we were all just fucking samurai. If your master says die, you die, do you understand? So, you're going to die? Certainly not. It was but an example. In any case, I wanted to fulfill my obligation. My final courtesy to a great mentor, perhaps. Or perhaps not. Perhaps I'm totally confused. Maybe I should ask about something else. It's the number of pistols. How many pistols were there when you entered the room? By which you mean which precisely? I feel like this is the actual one because it had a flashback and everything. Kind of leaning you towards it, just like, hey, this is the thing to do. Objection! <laughs> yep, just use it again. According to the defendant, Zach Grammere, when he entered the room, there were two pistols on that table. D two One of those pistols he used to shoot the clown in the forehead. Then he left with it in his pocket. Of course, this is what he would say. Unlikely the hapless clown, we must assume our defendant, has some brains in his head. Well, what about Mr. Valent has told us? You see, there's something about his testimony that doesn't make sense. What might that be? I told you, I took the pistol that was there and shot the clown. The old man! You made that reference earlier. Yes, I did. 
That's your story, at least. <laughs> but the rifling marks tell a very different story, Mr. Valant. Recall what Prosecutor Gavin told us. We compared the bullet taken from the victim's skull with the bullet fired from this gun. The rifling marks on the bullets were a perfect match. <clears throat> Mr. Valant, if you fired this pistol, then you shot the victim in the forehead. Haven't I been saying I shot the clown? Order! 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 Well, this is all rather sudden. Objection! <laughs> One of our done. But Prosecutor Gavin! I owe the court an apology. Sorry. Sorry for what? You see, I was unaware that two of these unique pistols were crafted. The analysis of the rifling marks only proved the type of gun that fired them. Objection! Objection! But that's not what you told us before. You said a perfect match. You said you verified the murder weapon. Which is why I'm apologizing to you now. What's the silly, I might add? Would you hold me accountable for a mistake made in my youth? That was just this morning! Gosh, she's 17. He's so tiny. Wait, but that's how old Apollo is. No, wait, Apollo said he's 22. <laughs> oh, I'm still young. Listen how young my voice sounds. <laughs> this doesn't sound like a 17 year old. <laughs> and my, I might add, it wasn't really my fault. The defendant had only admitted he took one pistol from the scene of the crime. He would not be having this pleasant discussion right now. Eh? Hmm. Valent Grimaire? Yes, Your Honor. You were presenting this to the court. You were presented to this court as a decisive witness. But you've proven to be more decisive... divisive than decisive. Quite the tongue twister, I might say. I know. You'll see, in time... Uh. The testimony so far has merely been a review of the facts. The proof comes next. Care to elaborate, Prosecutor Gavin? When Mr. Valent entered the hospital room, the victim had already been shot. Yeah. As his next toast testimony will prove how right the real fight is about to begin. Bring it on. Very well. The witness will now testify to the court. Help us determine who shot what. Who shot what? I arrived in the hospital room at the appointed time, which is to say, 11.20. After discovering the body, I fulfilled my obligation, then called in the doctor. The doctor examined the body before the police arrived. It was quite clear about the time of death. 11.10. And the one in the room at that time was my partner, not me. Hmm. Those times are rather close to, uh, you have to admit. You're talking about an alibi established over a matter of minutes. To use a 10 minute discrepancy as the basis of your alibi is easy to explain this situation here, Judge. For example, take on debut hit single 13 Years Hard Time for Love. Cue to the song, press the play button, and it will play 2 minutes 15 seconds. Do it a hundred times, the result is the same. Their debut single was only 2 minutes and 15 seconds long? What a ripoff. I only listen to Tool. <laughs> you listen to hour long music? And is that why your life is so crap? Because you're trying to get every bang for your buck of how long it is and not the quality of the music here, right? 
I mean, I guess that's what the joke is establishing. What the fuck are you talking about? Magic is a world of utmost precision. Hocus pocus reminds admirable focus. And in the time of death determined by the doctor, there is an inconvertible truth. Very well. The prosecution warns us that we're dealing with rather precise times. And we can expect the cross-examination to require the same level of precision. I would hope the defense refrains from its customary broad sweeping accusations. Lest we blur the focus this case so clearly demands. Point taken. Basil's remarks will result in a penalty. Carry on, Mr. Wright. Carry on. Carry on, right. You don't call yourself Mr. in your monologue? In your own head? Reasons? Who shot what? I arrived in the hospital room at the appointed time. <laughs> Press! 11.20 p.m. Can you prove that's when you arrived? Alas, such a feat may be beyond even the great Valent. For there was no one in that room but Magnifi. And he was departed after a fashion. I have here defended Zach Premier's sworn disposition. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time. It was only ten minutes before I left the room. And the victim was still alive. The time indicated by this letter to Zach was... 11.05. Exactly. Which means the witness could not have entered that room before 11.15. Because his partner was still in the middle of his crime. I see someone did their arithmetic homework. You see, the defendant himself has corroborated the witness's testimony. Hmm. Does that all make sense? Ooh, I can save in a decision? Oh wait, it's only when you're presenting evidence that you can't save. Or looking at the image and trying to poke it. This is Ace Attorney, there's always a contradiction. The only problem I see here is the glaring contradiction in that testimony. Was that a question? I guess it was. You have been warned here, right? Baseless remarks will be penalized. Well put, Prosecutor Gavin. Oh, and Mr. Wright, here's my answer to your question. Erg. Hold it! Yeah, screw it. We can just time skip to that point. Not a problem. I don't see any problem with that testimony. If you say so, let's continue, shall we? Sometimes the most magical thing of all is the truth. I hate magic. I can't all imagine. Hold it! You walk in on a murder, and the first thing you do is shoot the clown? The disciple does what the disciple must. I meant my... <laughs> the lead... My mentor's requests, without reason, had caused for me a surfeit of sorrow. My ears are itchy. So I gotta keep taking off the headset. The truth is the only thing I know without imagination. <laughs> Good said, Chet. <laughs> For what would I, Valent, be without him? May the soul of Magnifi, the great, find greater peace above. This I muttered to myself as I pulled that lowly trigger. In any case, I believe this is nothing more than what we have already learned. I'm still waiting for one of those right moments here, Attorney. May I remind you that baseless remarks will earn penalties? Proceed with that in mind. Yes, Your Honor. What a pain this is turning out to be. 
a Winston Pain. Objection! Hey, that sounds like Sam Regal. <laughs> Too bad I am unable to imagine an afterlife. I just have to say, hope it's good for you! Did the doctor say anything concerning the cause of death? Why, yes. I believe he screamed, My God! He's been shot in the head! It doesn't take a doctor to notice that. I probably would have screamed the same thing. And I would have penned the wet cream that arose in my soul at the horrid sight. Whatever happened to the good old-fashioned investigation, like the fact there is no blood spatter from the head? In any case, I believe this is nothing more than what we have already learned. I'm still waiting for one of those right moments here, attorney. May I remind you? This one was useless. Yes, your honor. What a pain. A Winston... Ah, no! No Winston pain. No. That's a good bit. Which bit? I have several bits going on here that I'm juggling. I don't think I'm stepping out on a limb to say I have some doubts about this. How could the doctor be so precise with the time? We do usually only get an estimated time of death. True. I'm not sure I've heard of a verified time of death. Magic reveals. In making the complex appear simple, but really is the opposite. There's a stephograph attached to him. We have the exact time of death. What appears complex in this case is a simple matter of subtraction. I see another person has done their arithmetic homework. The fuck? Oh, is that like... <laughs> is that like trying to subtly remind anyone playing this game when they're not doing their homework of just like, Hey, you have homework! This is the judge speaking! The point here is that Ivy is the vi is the is the Ivy the victim was taking. It's quite visible in the photograph of the scene. Oh yeah, it's only lost a certain amount of leader. Recall what we heard earlier about the victim Magnifique Grammy's schedule. Every night at eleven, Magnifique took an IV drip for thirty minutes. I can see the IV bag right there. Yes. Now. Look a little closer. Follow the tube down from the bag to the end. The, uh, the needle's been removed! Doubtlessly, it fell out when he was... It was... It fell out? What? No, it was pulled out. He was about to shoot up. I'm Claver Gavin, super cool rock star an ace prosecutor, but I'm still 17 and love doing my homework every night instead of playing video games. That would seem to be the case! When the needle comes out, the IV no longer drips. Um, you could just measure the remaining IV liquid. Precisely. The IV liquid functions, for our purposes, as an hourglass of sorts. This is how the doctor determined the time of death and the amount of remaining in the bag. It was determined that the IV stopped ten minutes after administration began. Approximately 10 minutes have passed since the uh, Ivy. And so it was when I Valent entered that room. And there's a discrepancy in the time there. Because if it's 10 minutes after it happened, the other guy shows up at 5. If you shot him at exactly 5. Hmm. 10 minutes had passed since the horrible crime that was committed. And this is proof! Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright? Hmm. That seemed important. Very. Well, seeing how this is the biggest clue we've had to the time of death, I'd say it's very important. Hmm. Agreed. It would be hard to imagine a more precise way to determine. What the fuck are you doing on that chair, Judge? I'm imagining. 
Ooh. You dare! Oh, we're having an argument with the same accent. It's really easy to go back and forth because it's just, ooh, old judge with floppy lip versus the, you know, young spry valent. Behold the power of arithmetic. Very well. The witness will add his uh, this detail into his testimony. Sometimes the most magical thing of all is imagine is the truth. I know what I was going to say. The water of life springs not eternal. The remaining IV liquid proves my innocence. Did you notice the IV yourself by any chance? When I first entered that room, the stench of gunpowder assailed me. Next, the mark of death upon my mentor's forehead. And then, his left arm. Did I spy a rose, drooping and wilted? Its thorn, the discarded IV needle. Not from the vein, from the force of the shot, luckily for you. If that IV have not been there, why, you might be a suspect. Indubitably so. I might say it's thanks to my lucky color. Yellow is the luckiest color. Megaloo silently entered my head, and now these grimmeers are just making me think of her. Who is that? Megaloo. Your lucky color? Indeed! Even today, I wear it proudly, pardon my suspect self. For it always, without fail, brings me luck. Why, when Zack and Valent won their first Magician's Grand Prix? Yes, the very one held by the Association of International Magicians, because that's an established thing in this world if you paid attention to the very big circus case. I was adorned in this attire then, too. And our trophy, a bust. Ah, what a day it was! Oh, gods, are you pulling up the very big circus? I am! <laughs> oh, this is one of those trip down memory lanes no one needs. My lucky color, yes indeed! And that ivy... I'd say I think twas huge, especially for me, Valent. Ivy's green. Hmm. That does seem to be the case indeed. Well, Mr. Wright, any thoughts on this testimony? Oh, it sure looks happy with himself. Okay, how about this lucky color testimony? My last case will be a perfect case. Von Karma would be proud. Right. Are you... Are you doing something with the space-time continuum? Edgeworth! Yes, this is my Edgeworth voice. It certainly sounds like your lucky color brought you plenty of luck. But not this time. Mr. Valent, your lucky colors betrayed you. I'm afraid you've lost me. Your Honor! The witness's testimony just now clearly contradicts the evidence. But what? Please recall my warning at the beginning of this cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Faceless accusations will be duly penalized. I do hope this latest accuse accusation is well-based and not mega cringe. Don't worry, I'm based as hell. I've got all your bases right here. Very well. Let's hear the defense's claim. I remember there was an image going around of uh, somewhere in Ace Attorney, just the phrase of just like, it's based. 
Mountain Dew IV, the perfect treatment for diabetes. Don't you know? That's why gamers are immortal. They don't die, they just respawn. That's what the Mountain Dew is for. Where is your evidence that contradicts what Mr. Valent has told us? A lot of things are green in this photo, except the gun. Take that! The crime scene tells all, Your Honor. The photo of the crime scene? I literally just guessed that because... What other item could it be? Oh, this blank colored. This blank colored. Colored object. Blank, 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 blankety... Not blank. And it's like the gun has already been used in this case. We haven't used the image that a lot yet. The photo of the crime scene! All this talk of color has me yearning for black and white clear-cut simplicity. Tell us, Herr White, just where is the contradiction in this photo? My pleasure. And I assure you, it's quite simple. Oh boy. I'm saving a lot and doing save scumming because I'm on stream. I don't need to have pride about this. I just want to get it done. But I can't promise anything in black and white. Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. And the health bar has shown up. The music has started. This is where you save. In what... What contradicts it? Not yellow. Valent Grammaire. Let's get one thing straight about your lucky color. It's yellow. Yes. Kind of takes the mystery out of it, but yeah. Something wrong with yellow, Mr. Wright? Yes, there is. Decisively wrong, in fact. Take another look at the photo of the crime scene. Why, that's Mountain Dew! What? Confusion. Doubt. Tells us. What do your elderly... Tell us. What do your elderly eyes spy? Even my elderly eyes can see a problem here, Mr. Valent. Look at the IV bag! What is this? What foul mac... What is the worst color, Chatter? Say this carefully. Know that I like the color yellow. I'm not moving till you say something, Chatter. What do you mean, yeah, it's the worst color? It's okay to be wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> Eh, eh. <laughs> my feelings my identity is built around the color yellow no <laughs> I specifically bought the yellow and purple joy cons because those are my two favorite colors my identity is piss okay back to the show it would be hard to call the IV liquid yellow. And I'm afraid no magic was involved in the taking of this photograph. <laughs> Quite the breakdown. Order! 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 What does this mean? Objection! There wasn't peace in the bag? No. This wasn't a little peepee -pee boy. Th this is some kind of mistake. Where's the peepee -pee boy? Aye, purple's good. You're only a little wrong. Purple is my second favorite color. I like gold more. Yes, Prosecutor Gavin? Your witness is mistake. Mm. The greener they are, the harder they fall. I suppose there's no substitute for experience. Valent Grimir. 
As you reminded us several times, your lucky color is yellow, but the IV is clearly not. Well, this contradiction can mean only one thing. Attention! And to think, you almost had me. Eh? I see your true colors now, Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright. Is something you'd like to tell us, Prosecutor Gavin? As far as this court can tell, the witness's testimony does contradict the evidence. <laughs> Yes, a contradiction. One that shall be pleased to hand right back to Mr. Wright. How do you mean? How? Because the witness has made no mistakes. I agree, at a glance the liquid does appear a sort of greenish yellow. But I assure you the liquid itself is quite yellow. Yellow liquid? How can you say that? As far as I can tell from this photo, it's green! Yes, but what color is the ivy bag itself? The bag? You mean the plastic bag on the hook? Hmm, it looks like a... I want to say lightish blue. Precisely. Figured it out yet? Put a yellow liquid in a blue bag and... You'd get green. This, incidentally, is the liquid's true color. But how did he see it? I... see? What? Your explanation does have the ring of truth, but... My god, is the ring made out of shit! OBJECTION! <laughs> Next thing, it's gonna be like, oh, the objection from Gumshoe is Travis, and Mercer is somewhere hiding in the background. I know they don't all work on the project, I'm just, I watch too much Critical Role that I can't separate all of them away from my head. Saiyan, only need magenta to get the pan fla I mean, primary colors? Oh, the pan flag. <laughs> As I thought. There's no substitute for exper experience, prosecutor together. You have experience saying experience yet. Shut it. <laughs> What? <laughs> you tell a good tale. You told a shit joke. But you've just proven something rather grave for you, that is. Grave. The liquid in the IV is yellow, yes. But how did the witness know that? Uh, um, <laughs> fucking Guffy, you fucking screwed me. It's quite unnatural when you think about it. You did think about it. Didn't you? Uh, uh, oh, I'm British. I'm not allowed to think. We have no imagination. Why do you think Ramirez is against it? <laughs> order! 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 Mr. Wright, you explain this at once. The witness clearly knew the color of the IV liquid. So I'm sure it means something, but what? I can think of only one possibility, Your Honor. The witness, Valant Grammaire, has testified that the IV liquid was yellow because... From the facts before us, the answer is clear. The witness knew that the IV liquid was yellow. Why? Because he'd seen it before? But not inside the blue bag we see in this photo. He saw the liquid by itself in a clear, colorless bag. I suppose he would have had to, but uh, I'm still not clear as to what this all means. Oh, I don't have it in my... Oh, did he switch the bags? Is that what he's saying? Ask yourself, why would he know if he didn't work at a hospital? That's where you'll find your meaning here. Objection! I'm afraid I'll find nothing. So, what if you knew the IV liquid's color? Leave the getting excited over absolute nothing to our teeny bopper fans, yeah? Objection! The IV liquid is the only evidence proving the time of death. A 30 minute hourglass with a 20 minute worth of sand remaining. Your claim, Prosecutor Gavin. I remember it well. However, 
There's a critical difference between an hourglass and an IV bag. But, wait, I know! An hourglass uses sand, but the IV bag uses liquid! No, I'm not gonna do a snake impression right here. I'm right! Right? I'm right, right, right? How is that a working sentence? Because one of those rights has a W. <laughs> I guess. Hmm. As much as it pains me to say this, Your Honor, no. Unlike the sands through an hourglass, IV liquid enters the patient's body, at which point, like magic, it disappears. However, what if the amount of the IV had increased? You couldn't tell, could you? After all, there's no way of knowing how much went in. Objection! Let me get this straight here, Mutt. You're saying the witness watered down the victim's IV bag? Mm -mm -mm. Not with water, but with IV liquid. That's how you knew the IV liquid was yellow. Now, wait, wait, I said wait! How might an amateur such as myself Es say to perform such a task. Objection! I'm an amateur too, but I can pour water into a cup. Objection! I'm afraid there's quite a big difference between a cup and an IV bag. Quite. Can you prove our witness is capable of such a feat? Yes, can you prove that the baby can teleport? He has a point. Amateurs. I, at least, we have some difficulty pouring IV liquid into the bag. You don't need to be an expert to see how this looks on the witness's face. He added liquid to that IV to throw off the time of death. I'm tired of these fairy tales lacking evidence. Well, Mr. Wright, any solid evidence to bring us back down to Earth? It's liquid evidence. Oh, you don't say. No, get out of here, stupid reference. Every time someone says liquid, you show up. Yeah, because I'm liquid snake. And I clap him. Nope, nope, do not continue that. You are banned. <laughs> Valet Grimaire, you're the subject. I'm afraid your magic won't serve you well in a life of crime. Might I ask what you're strongly suggesting? Magic relies on props, and props become evidence. Our witness was certainly able to increase the amount of IV in the bag. All he had to do was work a little magic, and the prop was... Take that! Haven't used it yet. The, the victim syringe! It's the perfect prop for magically increasing IV trick. And... Easy enough for an amateur to use. What, what kind of evidence is that? The syringe is clean. Not a trace of liquid in it. Objection! Mm -mm -mm. And don't you find that odd, Prosecutor Gavin? What, what? The victim had the syringe to administer his insulin shots. There should have been traces of insulin left inside. Uh, I'm just a baby boy. Why, why are you bullying me? No. Well, Valet Grimaire, as you pointed out yourself, the IV liquid makes the perfect clock. One that you could manipulate at will. I like it. <laughs> I do believe. Well, with this being his first, that the burden of this trial has been a bit too much to bear for Prosecutor Gavin. I'm afraid that while there is a doubt as to the amount of ivy liquid in that bag, the time of death cannot be proven. And that brings our trial to a close for today. Well, maybe I can squeeze an extra day out of this do a little much-needed investigation work. Is... Objection! The fuck? I didn't even get a word out. <laughs> what, what did the judge say? I see there are no objections. Court is objection! 
<laughs> Truly, there is no substitute for experience. Nothing blinds one to the truth so effectively. A word to the wise. Underestimate the young, and they'll sweep your feet out from the you. In a way, you never, ever expect it. You see, I know exactly what you're thinking. Huh? What's he talking about? You say the witness used the syringe to manipulate the level of the ivy and the liquid. But there is no proof. There is no proof he did it, either. Yes, quite true. Huh? Is, is he admitting it? Nor was this witness quite as decisive as I'd hoped. This, I admit, after all, why linger in the past when the further future, when the future holds so much? You, you have something in mind, Prosecutor Gavin. Proof, there, Judge. I have another way to prove my case. With evidence, no less. What's this? This is the victim, Magnifique Grammaire's diary. Diary. After going into the hospital, Magnifi began writing his memoirs, it seems. The story of his birth, his startling debut, and of meeting his disciples. It seems he intended for the last chapter to end, quite appropriately, with his death. Wait, that book doesn't say the reason... what the reason was, does it? The reason why his disciples couldn't refuse? His last request? Sadly, it is not. What's important here is on the last page. Apparently, the victim wrote in his journal that night, even after the IV had begun at 11. Let's read it, shall we? Hmm, this does appear to have been written just before his death. Do I have it? No. I just gotta read it through the text box. So, Grimmere, the, the desolate old man, Grimmere, tonight's ivy is in. Maybe the last. I leave the rest to them. The first should come soon. This journal may end here, or it may go on. But not long, that depends on his hand. All that is left to his mind, and was written with this pen. Oh no. This is the forged evidence. This is the ripped out thing of just like Fate's Clock will maybe make me wait a bit longer. Only at least 10 swift minutes remain. Uh oh. The court accepts this into evidence. Read the very last part with particular care and ignore the ripped out part of a page. Ignore it. This journal may end here, what may go on, but not long, that depends on his hand. Of course, by his, he refers to our defendant, Zach Grammier. That would make sense, yeah. He was the first scheduled visitor, after all. But look at what he said before that. This journal may end here, or it may go on. It may go on. Magnet Fee Grammier intended to write again. That is, if Zach Grammier didn't pull the trigger. <clears throat> I see the defense understands the meaning of this. The victim's diary does not go on. It ends after a suspicious rip. Because Magnifi's life was brought to an end by the defendant, Zach Grammier. Order! 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 Prosecutor Gavin! Are you certain that Magnifi Grammier wrote this? There is no mistaking his handwriting. Well, this does seem to be significant. According to this, Magnifi did not intend to continue his diary. Wow, it is so weird seeing, like, the other side of a case of where we know all the stuff they're pulling into it of just like, oh, the handwriting's his, it totally is, but now we know that that girl forged it. She said it herself. And so, it just, 
every time they say it, it's just a little more stabbing. Yet, yeah. if his diary ended here, which plainly did, which plainly it did, then the one who pulled the trigger was the first visitor, Zach Grimier. Well, how do you like me now, Hair Right? How do you like me now? Still too green for your taste. Mm. Now I could go for some broccoli, just not any cauliflower. Cauliflower is fucking white. Yeah, just like you. <laughs> He's right about the diary being pretty clear. Still, I find it hard to believe that he'd overlook such an obvious problem with his precious evidence. Well, Mr. Wright, the witness's testimony w we heard was lacking. But put together with this evidence, it seems quite significant for our case. If the diary is accepted like this, the trial's over. Oh, maybe it's time for me to show them something. I am so curious of just like, I change fate. I say no fake evidence. I don't like anything about the situation. The judge is already getting twitchy with his gavel. So I better show them something quick or else. I'm left with no choice. Ain't that the truth. <laughs> but to show my own evidence. But what? You have some evidence that overturns this diary? Mm. It's not too late to rethink this and avoid more embarrassment. It was an illusion of choice buttons. No! Very well. Please show us your evidence, Mr. Wright. Incidentally, I don't even think of showing us this diary of showing to the... Just... Uh, incidentally, don't even think of showing us this diary of just showing the court. Eh? Now that we've come this far, I hope you have something a little more decisive. Like... You hypothetically should be able to just point out the torn pages, like, obviously. But that's why Gavin just said that. It's just like, I don't throw uh, don't throw me the evidence that I just added here. That's my details, because I have a whip somewhere. This is the last page. The diary ends here. Uh, huh? What's this? It looks like... A page was ripped out. Well, now isn't that interesting? There's the grammar symbol. He just says, nuh uh. Yeah, welcome to the life of being a defense attorney. <laughs> and not even think about contradicting my obviously faulty evidence. Dang, he got me. Show us the evidence that proves the victim continued writing in his diary. I'm saving right here because I am going to literally throw the book at him. Alright, I'd be happy to. The decisive evidence proving that the diary didn't end in this page is... Take that! That! <laughs> you fucker! Hmm. This evidence... You're saying this is decisive? We don't need proof that he might have committed... Continue his diary. We need proof that he did continue in that diary. If such a thing exists, of course. Time to get cozy with the court record. I know I've got the evidence in here somewhere. Very well. Please show us your evidence, Mr. I. Incidentally, don't even think of showing us this diary. What? But I, I checked it and all. <laughs> I saw the missing page. All right. I'd be happy to. Decisive evidence. Can't change fate. Take that! First, take a close look at this diary. Note that a page has clearly been ripped out. Now, if we don't move the text box along, nothing bad happens. Seven years disappear. We are now in the better timeline.
Happy Disbarment Day? What's that mean? What's this? We're continuing the bad timeline! What? No! I didn't notice that I pushed the button! No! That's why we're still in the bad timeline talking about it. As it just so happens, I have here what I believe to be the missing page. Alika, I don't believe it! Look at this page. It's hard to imagine that the first visitor that night shot Magnifi Grammaire. That's the defense's position. Wait, wait, let me see that. Letters, letters, letters. I can't read! What in se- The judge is Southern? What in Sam Hill? What? He is Southern? People celebrate the day Phoenix was disbarred. Ah! What in Sam Hill? Now I want to keep the judge like this because then it's different than the Grammeers. Why? This is a continuation of the victim's diary. <coughs> Excuse me, I something came over me. <laughs> hmm. Note the torn edge of the page. It's a perfect match with the torn remains of the last page of Magna Fey's diary. It's magnifique, you fiend! Quite remarkable! Would you care to explain what all this means, her attorney? Can you not read? No. The diary continued after his first visitor came. Which means that the victim was still alive after Zack Gramir left. Leaving no one to take his life but the second visitor. Valent Gramir! No. No! The handwriting, too, matches that on the other pages. This is, without a doubt, the genuine article. So the judge is the one to verify it. The judge is gonna die when they find out. They're looking at the court record. He really did have one rabbit on each sleeve. Yeah, he does that every time. And, oh, doves, seven doves in his pockets. That's why they come from behind his cloak. Order! Order! Pigeon! What? What? But, but wait! This, this is impossible! That old man couldn't have written that! Objection! Finally. You just couldn't resist. Could you have right? Resist what? Presenting solid evidence? Don't say it like that, Phoenix. Now he has you on the ropes. Head judge. Yes, Prosecutor Gavin. Might I request we put the current cross-examination on hold? The prosecution would like to call a new witness. But, but Prosecutor Gavin, this evidence overturns the current witnesses. I ask only to put it on hold. Please, my new witness is a very very important piece of testimony to give. Five minutes, no more. I promise, Your Honor. Well, well if you put it in that way... Mr. Wright, what's your take on this? Well, Your Honor, judging from his enthusiasm, we'll have to hear this new testimony sooner or later anyway. So might as well be sooner. He got cocky. <laughs> then... Though this is highly, HIGHLY irregular, we will put the current cross-examination on hold. The witness may step down. Now, Prosecutor Gavin, please bring this surprise witness to the courtroom. I had a bad feeling just then. That ripped up page was too obvious. He must have known. As I should have known, it was a bad sign all around. Oh, this is current, Phoenix Top. You. 
Hmm. Holding trial with no evidence is a first. Even for me, Prosecutor Gavin. Wait! Is this not a direct conflict of interest in the last thing of the prosecutor is trying to prove a murder of someone that used to be a witness in a previous case? They knew each other is what I'm trying to say. This is a, this is a conflict of interest seven years later. Why isn't, like, Francesca doing the trial? I want to see her. I want to see everyone, but Emma. Emma's annoying. I beg the court's understanding. But I had to make a judiciary deal with the witness to secure his testimony. A judiciary deal? The details of his testimony may have some legal ramifications, shall we say. I thought it best to contain the information to this room. Hmm. Very well. And you are the witness, I gather? Ah. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. State your name and occupation for the record. Yeah. Um, my name's Drew Misham. I am a painter. A painter? And you are somehow related to this case? No. No. Not per se. I have one simple question for this witness. Mm. Mr. Michelle, was it? Do you know what this is? Oh, yeah. I, I know it well. How's that possible? You have seen this diary page somewhere before? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I made it. You... What? You made it? Yes. You might call it one of my works. The prosecutor's office received a tip-off yesterday. Illegal evidence has been prepared for the trial of Zach Grammer. I illegal evidence? I initiated an investigation and found this witness, a painter to the world at large. Drew Masham has another side, you might say. He is skilled in making perfect reproductions of certain things. Forgeries, in other words. For forgeries? Well, well, so we are to understand that this page here is a fake, prepared by a certain defense attorney. Objection! Objection! Hold it! I didn't prepare this evidence. Objection! Oh, the attorney sp Oh no! The Oh no! The attorney who prepared it was Christopher Gavin. That's why it was changed last minute. Something about this page, I presume. But what is it he. But what is he saying? It makes no sense. After all, it was you who presented this evidence to us, Phoenix Wright. Witness! Um, Mr. Misham? Was it? Who requested this forgery? Who was your client? Yeah, that I don't know. What? Most of my clients prefer to remain anonymous, even to me. I make the items they want and receive my payment. That's the extent of my contract with them. Objection! You said contract instead of contact, but but there's no proof this is a fake! It's a fake. Uh. To avoid just this sort of problem, I always put a special mark on my works. I can say without a doubt, this is mine. Mr. Wright, why, why are you rifling through the evidence? What do you hope to see?
I don't know what the mark is. You have just presented illegal evidence to my to this court. My court. It was careless of me. That's all I can say. Oh, oh boy. Um, uh, here. Now, oh, what is it with Trucy and handing over fake evidence? <laughs> What's this? I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. They said it was really important. So it was a trap. A fatal trap. Mr. Wright. Yes? Do you have it? an explanation for yourself. If I did, would the court hear it? Probably not. Forging evidence is a serious crime. And presenting it in court, a serious mistake. A fatal mistake for an attorney. Fatal, too. Perhaps for your client, I fear. Huh? Tell me. What kind of defendant relies on forged evidence? The answer is quite clear. A guilty one. Objection! Your Honor, wait! I understand that presenting forged evidence in court is a serious crime. But you cannot hold my client responsible for actions I undertook as an individual. I am sorry, Mr. Wright. Your Honor? Another close call, I dare say. If the prosecutor's office hadn't received that hot tip, everything would have gone the way you wanted to, you yeah. know? I even gave you a chance. Too bad you decided not to think before embarrassing yourself. Well, I tried to change the timeline, but I couldn't. I see no need for further discussion of this matter. Special witness dismissed. Thank you. I will die in seven years' time. Let me lick it. M Mr. Attorney? Yes. Could I ask your name? Uh, Phoenix Wright. Mr. Wright. I have seen and studied many people, but none like you. I'll remember you, Mr. Wright. Illegal forger dismissed. Well, they said it was a judiciary deal. Though I deeply regret having to declare a verdict in this way, this trial is over. <laughs> you have the right to find a new attorney and make an appeal. However, this court must. Ah, your honor. N yes, Mr. Zack. There is one thing I wish to make clear. Today, in this courtroom, you cannot declare me guilty. It is impossible. I'm afraid the defendant is quite mistaken. I most certainly have the authority to declare a verdict on you. Except, tell me, how, how do you plan to announce your verdict when your defendant does not exist? Doesn't exist? What are you talking about? I'm talking about this! Yeah, Mr. Enigmar! The defendant's escaped. Find him. Quick. Bailiff! Close all exits of the building. All the devil! He must not be allowed to escape. I must have blood. That day, in that courtroom, a miracle occurred. The defendant, Shady Enigmar, a.k.a. Zach Grimmere, did not just escape from court. He literally, unbelievably, vanished. Right before the bailiff's eyes. No one ever saw him again. Not since that day. This is the Grammy of Miracle! <laughs> no verdict was declared. After all, the defendant didn't exist. That's how it happened. The trial of magician Zach Grimier vanished.
along with him for all eternity. Ooh, we've never seen this empty. <laughs> the mysteries that remained behind were all solved, however. But not until seven years later. To be continued. Say progress. Alrighty. As I said, this was gonna be a shorter stream today. Only three hours! Yay! <laughs> I wanna enjoy the rest of the today, so. Well, now I can look down at the bottom and see all this stuff. Turn to the title screen. Yay. Yep. Thanks for all the peeps that came out for this April Fool's joke of a title. And I will be disappearing now. So. Uh, 